are. Okay. <laughs> Hello, welcome to this week's legislative update. I'm Jim Baumgart. Co-host is Lynette uh, Bullabush, who is sitting to my right. right. Glad to be here. It's a wonderful time because this is uh, spring in Wisconsin, and we have all kinds of elections coming up, uh, nonpartisans early on, and then in the fall, partisans. And so we wanted to make sure that uh, uh, we not only talk about elections, but we try to get people involved in uh, being registered and the reasons why. So we have uh, Lauren Rose um, Hoffman. Holland, Hoffman, Hoffman. <laughs> President of the League of Women Voters of Sheboygan County. Correct, and uh, we want to thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And it's an uh, uh, important time in, in Wisconsin because uh, uh, people will have a chance to vote for people that are going to represent them. It is an important yeah. time, and League of Women Voters, as a nonpartisan organization, um, one of the most important things that we do is host candidate forums. And we are a new organization, just started, was it eight or nine months ago right. we, we determined? I that. mean, new locally. New locally, not, right. right. The, Nationally, we've been around since 1920 yes. and just had our 98th birthday on Valentine's Day. So, yeah. um, but locally, we're very new. And so for the past, I don't know how many years, uh, American Association of University Women has sponsored candidate right. forums. And um, this year, for the first time with our new League of Women Voters, we are co-sponsoring with them. So there are quite a few candidate forums. I think I brought a graphic for mm -hmm. you to show. But um, I wanted to, to read, if I could, just the elections that are coming up yes. on April 3rd. And there will be forums for each one of those elections. So we have, um, on April 3rd, uh, state offices which include the Court of Appeals judge and Circuit Court judge, and then at the local level, we're voting for the City of Sheboygan School Board and City Aldermanic Districts 2, 5, 7, 9, and 10, and Sheboygan County Districts mm -hmm. 1, 10, and 24. Does that sound right to you, Jim? Sounds pretty close. Okay. Yeah. I, hope it's, I hope it's not just close, but... No, no, I think <laughs> it's exact. So, um, so with all those candidate forums, um, you'll have the opportunity to, to listen to the candidates, ask them questions, and they will be moderated. So there will be uh, somebody there, kind of the, the, uh, the circus ringleader, <laughs> who will direct everything to make sure that, it's a, that everyone has a chance to speak and ask questions. And I believe they will all, um, all, almost all be at Mead Library? Is that correct? They will be, uh, with the exception of one, which is, uh, I believe, one of the school board um, one of the school board forums, which is in Random Lake, okay, that's right. I believe. And if people want to know where and when these are, we will have the flyer that we'll show here. They right. can also go to your Facebook page. We have a correct? Facebook page for League of Women Voters of Sheboygan County, and you can find out not only about the forums, but about the presentations that we have on a variety of topics that are political in nature, um, but we are nonpartisan. So topics that we've had recently involved climate change and other environmental issues related to the Lake Michigan watershed, right. um, health care reform, gerrymandering. So you, if you keep track of that Facebook page, you'll see all the things, all the different presentations we do. Some of them are panel discussions. Some of them are um, our viewing of a, a, a movie, a documentary, which we just did, mm -hmm. the Before the Flood documentary. Um, but they're all listed there, and usually one or two a month, so we're busy. And tell us about the League. Um, in our other show, you, you read the information about your purpose. It's mm -hmm. all about voting rights. It's all about informed voters. Right. Are there, here's your chance to clear up any misconceptions, either about your organization or about voting. Well, we'll start with about the organization because it's called League of Women Voters, right. and it's not just for women. Okay, good. So we good have we up. have men in our organization, and we have men who are not just the husbands of the women. So, <laughs> um, and we have very active men in our organization. Yes, we do. So we're a grassroots organization, and as I said before, we're political, but we're nonpartisan, and our our goal is is twofold, locally especially twofold. One, to get out the vote. So anybody who is eligible to vote, we want you to be able to register to vote easily and we want you to be able to get to the polls easily. Uh, and then the second thing is, it's not enough to be able to vote. 
you have to be an informed voter. We don't want you going to the polls and throwing darts at the <laughs> at your <laughs> ballot to see what you right or do any mini mini mo. We want you to be informed okay. uh, because democracy depends on an informed electorate. So those those are the two. Um, those are the misconceptions sometimes people have about league is that that we're that we're all Democrats. Right. We're not. We lean that way. To be frank with you, we do. Um, but our goal is 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 to get a, a really representative membership, representative of the county that we serve. So we need more Republicans. We need more men. We need more younger people yeah. because yeah. that's the only way we're going to be relevant. We spend so much time talking about issues and if everybody in the room feels the same way it's there's no discussion there's no discourse right. there's just as we said we've said in the past just kind of patting each other on the back for being so darn smart well we want to hear the other side and we want to learn how how to be good listeners and how to have true civil discourse which is what the country was built on you asked about misconceptions about voting right. and um, and I made a list of those because I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> so I wanted to, to go through those. So the first misconception is, um, this isn't a misconception, this is some, well, something people don't know, is that you can actually register to vote online. Yes. Right. So if you've moved, which is, which is something else people don't know, you need to re-register to vote, and you can do that online also. All you need is a Wisconsin driver's license. It can even be expired, I'm told, but you need a driver's license, okay. or a Wisconsin state-issued photo ID. Um, that's the first one. Um, and you can do that on myvote.wi.gov, which website. is really a great website because that website will also tell you, if you put in your name and your address, it will tell you um, what's going to be on, on your, the ballot. Not only will it tell you if you're registered or not, but what's going to be on your particular ballot based on the district in which and you live. And where you vote. And if where you, you haven't vote. voted, yes. who your clerk is, so you can find out more information. That's right. Yes, thank you. That's right. So the, uh, another thing a lot of people don't know, but it was in the news lately, is that if you have not voted for four years, uh, you will be receiving, if you, well, you would have received in June a postcard asking you, hello, pretty much saying, hello, are you there? Mm -hmm. Do you still want to be a registered voter? And you needed to have returned that postcard. In the state of Wisconsin, 800,000 of those postcards went out. They send them after a presidential election or a gubernatorial election, and 800,000 went out. They wow. figure about half of those were people that had actually died or had moved out of the state, but the other 400,000, a significant number of them just had not voted in four years. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't, you said, well, I'm registered, but you haven't voted in four years, you need to re-register. But you can also register the same day that you vote as well. You can. There are efforts to change that in this state, unfortunately. Right. And we've had that discussion on other programs here even. Yeah. But you can right now. You can just walk in and say, I, have, I can vote. It's my lunch hour. And they will help you do it. Right. right With there. a, a With photo ID. ID. Right. Yes. Um, so related to that is that your voter registration does not follow you when you move. So even if you, you're in Sheboygan County and you move from Kohler to Sheboygan, the city of, which I did, I had to re-register to vote. So it's based on your, on your okay. district, not That's on your county. Um, and then members of the U.S. military as well as spouses and dependents of U.S. military members are eligible to re receive an absentee ballot online until 5 p.m. on election day, cool. which is something I never knew, I never knew that but either. I prepared for today, <laughs> right. so I learned that. And then the fifth one, um, which is that if you're a convicted felon, but if this was a, Jim clear, clarified this for me, but this would not be a federal felony offense, but a state felony offense, but if you're a convicted felon, once your sentence is complete, including any extended, su sur yeah, extended supervision or probation, yeah. you can vote. Okay. So That's a lot of people know. don't know that. Right. And some people that uh, uh, are felons have gone through a system and they really feel they want to be part of uh, the change. Mm -hmm. right. And so it's important for them to get back into the voting right. process so they can participate. Right. Why are Agreed. you so passionate about this? What, what you about know, you this asked me that before, you? and I thought I should have a good answer, and I don't think I do, <laughs> except that I, I, 
truly, I, my parents were both pretty political people, and so that probably was where it started. I remember being seven or eight years old and putting, putting leaflets on people's doors with my mom. Um, but I think you know the the older the older I get, and you do a little bit of traveling, and you see other how people live in other countries, and you come back here, and you realize um, how important it is what what we have. And you, you you read a little, and you read a lot, and you see a lot on TV and on the internet, and you realize um, you know there there is just um, you know we have we are are blessed to be in this country, and we were and I think still are dangerously close to letting a lot of those rights uh, slip, mm -hmm. slip through our fingers. And it's really, really important for us to, to understand what makes this country different from other countries and, mm -hmm. and to, um, you know, to really embrace that and, and do the hard work that it takes to be a good citizen. Well, some people think everything's going well, so why should they participate? Mm. But that is really when they have to participate to make sure that it uh, stays that way because there's no guarantee. Uh, if you look at all the countries that uh, were democratic uh, and they've right. uh, fallen yeah. on, on, on the sideline, and uh, ours has been one of the longest. Right, they've become complacent. And you're right. right, ours is one of the longest. I mean, this is an experiment still. You know, yes. we are, yeah. you know, we're, we're not very old as a country. You know, what, 200 and how many? 240? 1776. 17, all right, I can't do the math in my head. But, um, but this is still an experiment. Absolutely. And, and you know, we need to keep working at it. And so I, I guess that's why I'm passionate about it. And I think too, you know, as we get older, we realize that there is some truth in every perspective. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's important that we, that we know how to listen to that, listen for that bit of truth and try and find common ground, try and find consensus because we see what happens in Congress as an example of what happens when they can't listen. Right. And, yes. um, and, and then, you've probably experienced a bit of that oh, in absolutely. your time. Absolutely. But one of, the, one of the things that uh, I, I think is important is that we do have organizations like the League of Women Voters right. that uh, if people want to get involved, it, you're with the a uh, like-minded uh, group, even though the diversity is there. Right, you're not uh, promoting any specific no. agenda. We want to make sure that's uh, and, clear. Uh, you just want people uh, to be informed, the, uh, the, uh, and active. Uh, people and can can participate, but we have to close. Yeah. It is time. No I want to thank. I want to thank. That went so fast. Lauren <laughs> Rose, <laughs> Offland for coming and thanking the uh, League of Women Voters for starting up again and being part of the Sheboygan County effort. Till next week. This has been Legislative Update. Thank you very much for letting us talk about what we do.